Morning guys, it's Saturday morning. Um, I got a few clips I'm going to throw up just from the shop. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, touch on is uh, new Chevy trucks have um, these big plastic moldings on the sides. If you ever get one, just take them off. <laughs> just be done with it, take them off because uh, they're known to fall off. Um, they're colored, colored plastic and they tend to fade. They don't look that good after a while. Um, if they seem like they're going to stay on, you can mask them off right on the vehicle and paint them. They hold up pretty good that way. But if you get one that falls off, just take them all off because as you'll see in uh, this clip I put up, the ones you get from the dealership or the factory are much worse. They're warped like crazy and um, they go on and they fall off even quicker. So um, really the best thing is just take them off. Nope, I don't envy whoever puts these, has to put these warped, screwed up moldings back on a truck. These are no better. Let's see, and then our roof job we just did, I'll throw that up. This is a Mazda CX-7. New roof, hood, just about all the sheet metal on this side. Um, a lot of repairs on this side. This was a tree fall from Hurricane Sandy. The entire interior has been out and brand new dash has just been installed. Um, the tree that fell into this thing um, went, you know, broke the, the sunroof, went through the windshield and went inside and somebody was inside with a chainsaw freeing the tree up I guess. It was a pretty big mess inside. But uh, it's all coming along now. We actually got a couple roof jobs to go which is good, it's keeping us busy. So a couple coats, this is solid black, and then a lot of clear coat. Doing everything but the rear hatch and bumper. Yeah, I'll be doing a little polish in Monday morning. Probably doesn't show, but there's little nibs and stuff, but no big deal. Just a lot of buffing. like that. No, you can't really see them on this. But she's done. A lot of material. Oh yes, tinted yellow clear again. With a going, it going engine compartment. I got a great sticker from my buddy Doug at Lakeside Ranch. Appreciate that. That's going right up here with, with all the other guys. I don't know where he's been lately. And now I think I'm going to cut up some pallets. Gonna have an outdoor fire Christmas Eve maybe, weather permitting, because it's uh, your typical Cape Cod day. Yep. And there's the pallet wood. Now to drain the tank on that and get the snowblower in here, do a little maintenance. Well, we've had some pretty cold days so far, but today's not one of them. It's about 55 degrees. Kind of wet though. Musty One did a snowblower video where um, the shifters get kind of stuck. And mine's been getting that way and it's pretty jammed up now. Um, and I also, looks like I left the gas in it last year, which is not good. So I'll have to see if it runs still. Um, so I took apart this rear panel, and I, well, apparently I had a mouse in there. Didn't seem to do any damage. Um, that inner shaft isn't rusty or anything, but I'm gonna grease it up and see how that helps. And try and get this thing running. Although I'm definitely not gonna need it today. Yes, and uh, VW Darren, this is a snow blower. <laughs> Although I'm sure you've seen it when you were in Pennsylvania. And and I just remembered I got a video on uh, fixing this. There was an engine light on. It was a O2 sensor. I'll throw that in. That was hard to get to. 
Okay, new oxygen sensor on the manifold. It's a heated sensor, which made it a hundred dollar a freaking part. Um, this little bolt on this cover that I'm putting back on, you have to get from the top with a 10 millimeter box end, which is just fun. And I'm going to bend it back up so I can get that bolt back in. And then I'm going to retest. I couldn't get good information on how to test the thing, so hopefully this was the problem. It's what the code said it was because the engine light wouldn't clear. And this is the Saturn Ion. All right, I'm gonna put that together and then test it. Okay, do the key on. Whoops. Four codes. Those are all the ones it had. So let's erase it. Engine light off. Hopefully it stays off. Do a scan again. Zero codes. It's idling better than it was. I'll just have to see how it goes. So through an earlier test on the engine light, um, this gave me some codes, and there's a little booklet in here that gave the, uh, I think they were called, they call them P codes with the emissions and um, I basically just looked them up online and they're also in here and um, it came back to uh, heater bank one oxygen, sen oxygen sensor. This is the first oxygen sensor off the back of the manifold of the, uh, the Saturn Ion, the uh, 2 liter, 2.2 liter Ecotec engine. Um, I guess it's got a heated circuit in here that this preheats and uh, that was what was out according to the code that it was spit out. Um, I kind of, I kind of was in a rush. I didn't have a chance to uh, learn how to test this thing. Um, the sensor itself, there's a way to test it using a torch um, to heat it up and getting certain readings off of these pins. But um, I was pretty well confident this was the problem, so I had ordered one. And the guy told me it would be 50 bucks. No, it was. That was the cost through the shop. Um, uh, off the street, it would have been that. Can you imagine that? And that's just for one sensor. And there's another one off the catalytic converter, which I don't think is heated. It's just your basic oxygen sensor. So that was it. The hardest part was getting a shield out of the way to get access to this thing from underneath. And um, even then, I don't, I don't even think a... Uh, oxygen sensor socket would have worked. Um, there was no room for much of anything. I think I used a I used an adjustable wrench with barely enough room to get it cracked and then I used a combination of uh, just whatever I had. Um, where's the tool? This little guy probably was the best part of getting it off and uh, I used that to put the new one on and the new one came with some of this uh, stuff that can keep it from seizing, hopefully. I don't, not that I ever want to replace that again. Also, also there's a shield on the, on the manifold that was just barely touching that. And ever since I've had the car, it made this rattling sound taken off, kind of a tinny sound. And I could never find it. And I bent that back. That's probably what caused the sensor to go bad, that thing rattling against it. So I pushed that back, and uh, that, that was nice, not having to hear that anymore. And um, So hopefully uh, the engine light stays off, and that can get inspected in another month or two. And uh, let's see, uh, Milo, I know you have one of those cars, so if you ever run into that problem, that's how you deal with that one. That, that one's hard to get to. Probably the hardest thing in that whole car. So, uh, oxygen sensor, yep. Okay. 
Get a little grease. Yeah. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that's too easy not to do. It moves really good now. Let's see. Effortlessly. I noticed this wheel has some cracks in it, but it still works fine. There's a good one right there. There it is. But it's still working fine. Is the uh, how that engages and what was this one? there's a clutch back there that engages the drive everything else is good